In this video, I'm going to reveal the top 10 comic book lettering mistakes so you know to avoid them and become a better letterer. Let's dive straight in. Starting off our list at number 10 is interrupting eye lines. You'll find this occurs a lot in comics. Two people in a close up staring into each other's eyes. Try not to place your lettering in between the line of sight. If it's a romantic moment, you're cock blocking the mood. If two characters are squaring up for a fight, you're breaking the tension. You need to be sensitive to the emotions that the artist has put into the page. So avoid interrupting eye lines. At number nine, beware of the tangents. Those cheeky cheeky tangents pop up everywhere. A rough definition of a tangent is a line intersecting a curve or another line but not crossing it. I have an example of a page I've tangented up here to show you. As you can see, we have lines meeting but not crossing other lines all over the place. Tangents should be avoided at all costs as they cause visual dissonance. And a rough definition of that, a lack of harmony or agreement in things. In lettering's case, they can create areas of attention that draw the eye, causing the reader to look at the tangents rather than focus on the art or the words. Avoid those cheeky cheeky tangents to become a better letterer. At number eight, we have incorrect stroke weight. Yes, being too heavy or too thin with your strokes can have a detrimental effect on the comic. Too thick of a stroke and it'll start to dominate the art and the words. Too thin of a stroke and it'll fail to make an impact. When choosing your stroke, you need to take into account the thickness of the inker's lines, the thickness of the border panels, and the weight of the font as well. It's up to you as the letterer to find the perfect balance between these three so that your strokes will feel a part of the art and not dominate the rest of the page. Number seven on our list to avoid is inconsistency. Inconsistency in the lettering can be confusing and interrupt the reading experience. But once you set a rule in lettering, you need to be consistent and stick to it. Characters who speak in a certain font or color or use a specific word balloon must maintain the same style throughout the comic. You need to set consistency to your captions so readers understand if a caption refers to a person or a thing. Consistency is also required in the distance you set your letters from the panel borders, in the distance around the word balloon, the font size, the width at where the tail meets the balloon. Every time you create a rule in your lettering, you need to remain consistent. Otherwise, the reader will just think something's not quite right. At number six on the list, we have crossing tails. Don't do it. It just looks weird. We move into the top five lettering mistakes to avoid, starting at number five with choosing the wrong font. Your font choice needs to fit in with the art and the genre of the story. If you're lettering a cutesy animal comic with a cartoony feel, you need to match the font accordingly. If you're lettering a horror comic, using a cute font will look out of place and ruin the whole reading experience. And while we're on the subject of fonts, tip 5.5 is don't use a font too big or too small. Different fonts have different sizes. So choosing 12 pixels for a font it's not going to look the same with every single font. If you're struggling to find a good font size, just take a screenshot of a font in a comic that you think looks really good and just try to match it up in the art. At number four, we have don't cover up important art. Placing your balloons comfortably inside panels can be difficult, especially when the writer's feeling overwordy or the artist hasn't left enough room but try to avoid placing lettering over the important part of the art. Things such as faces, hands that are signaling things, and important background elements that have been referenced in the script. If you can't find the space to add letters without ruining the art, try butting bubbles against panels, overlapping speech balloons, 
letting balloons drift outside of the panels, even decreasing the font size couldn't work as you chase that magic space to make the lettering look good. Here's one classic example of a letterer who's been pushed to their limits. You gotta admit that there's a certain element of fuck you on display by the letterer here. At number three in our list of mistakes to avoid, it's confusing the reader. There's nothing more likely to pull a reader out of the experience than not knowing which balloon to read next. If it's confusing, you'll make the reader feel like an idiot. And no one wants to feel that way. Your number one job as the letterer is to help tell the story without interfering in the art or the script. Lettering is known as the silent art because you need to be read but not overly noticed. Sending a reader to the wrong panel makes them think about what they're doing, when really they should be effortlessly floating through the panels without having to involve mental gymnastics. At number two, of course, is the dreaded crossbar eye. Voted the most obvious sign of amateur lettering by comic book letterers around the world, using the crossbar eye will see you struck from the letterer's magic circle and cast out into the darkness. It doesn't really deserve to be number two, but it's kind of comic lettering tradition now that this gets slated. There are plenty of far worse lettering crimes than using a crossbar eye, but they do look a bit crappy, so don't use them except when they can help a reader better understand the text. And topping our chart, and rightly so, with its head held high, the number one lettering mistake that comic creators make is not hiring a letterer. It cannot be stressed enough. More stress than the plumpest turkey on the lead up to Thanksgiving. If you're not at least reasonably proficient at lettering comics, then please, please hire a letterer to do it for you. Too many creators think they can get away with not hiring a letterer just to save a few bucks, but a good letterer will improve your comic tenfold and make it look professional. And they are the cheapest member of the comic creation team. Look, just because you can write, it doesn't mean you can letter. And there you have it, the top 10 comic book lettering mistakes to avoid on your journey to becoming a comic book creating superstar. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. And if you're feeling particularly awesome, please subscribe to the channel as well. Until the next time, 